Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. Hope you are having an amazing day. Well, guess what? Today is already June 4th and we are half, half, halfway through the year. Hello, Adrian. How are you? So, what happened for you this last weekend? Because this weekend, I had one of the most amazing times. If uh, you have been a part of my Heal Talk Tuesdays or know about me, you also know that this last Saturday, I just had my seventh annual 3E event. And it is a day dedicated to women, empowering women. It was absolutely amazing, great production. I had a beautiful master of ceremonies. The room was filled with beautiful vendors. We had incredible vendors. Our, uh, the room was filled with beautiful women, plus three incredible, powerful speakers that I had up on stage, each one a leader of their own, and it was Dr. Armina Garpetian, it was Christiel Goda with LA Cancer Network, and Dr. Carolyn Rowley with uh, her own practice. She is a psychologist. So what I walked away, and so many have come to me and said thank you for that, is, you know, it's not always that we have to bring powerful speakers, celebrities, because we have celebrities among our own community. What I walked away with, not only that day that I also spoke, I spoke about uh, empowering women, about confidence, about self-esteem, about how we connect to our body and this, the connection of the mind, body, and emotion is this entire day was dedicated to 3E. So what does 3E stand for? In a way, I want to say it is a method that I have created, a method called the three E, which stands for evoking the past, which is our history, embracing the present, the reality, the here and now, and evolving to our destiny, what it is that you want to create. So evolving to what will be. So allow me to break it down. As a hypnotherapist, when a client comes to me, what I do is I guide them to a state of relaxation. But before that, from the moment they step into my office, we have created this beautiful place of healing. And it is a place of nurturing, a serenity. A safe place, a safe place for all who enter. It's not only that it's a woman, it could be a teenager. I have a lot of men clients, but it is a place that you come in and you feel safe and comfortable. And the serenity that surrounds you, it brings a sense of, oh, right? So for any healing to take place in life, we need to feel safe. When you go to a therapist, when you go to church, when you go anywhere that you want to do a, a meditation, a prayer, a therapy or healing, even surgery, when you walk into the doctor's office, the therapist's office, the dentist's office, you want to feel safe by the person who is taking care of you. And that is what happens, not only in our office, from the reception area, but in my own office, where a client comes and sits in the recliner, right? From that moment, because hypnosis, even the word hypnosis, can be intimidating, it can be scary, thinking, oh, you've got full control over me. Uh, hi, Becky. You've got control over me. You're going to do something that I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Realizing that hypnosis is an internal process. 
and not an external force. So I, as a therapist, have absolutely no control over you or the person. What if, what if I were to tell you, you go in and out of hypnosis every single day? You do. We all do. What I like to say is we bring our clients out of hypnosis, which is this mundane day-to-day funk that we go into, this habit we get a part of that we do over and over, over and over, over and over. Hmm. So when you sit in my recliner and I take you to a state of relaxation from your conscious level so you can feel safe and comfortable and just allow yourself relax. Relax in mind, relax in body, and just sit back, just close your eyes, and just listen. Listen to the sound of my voice. Listen to the sound of my voice guiding you to a deeper state of relaxation. You're not going anywhere, just sitting in a recliner. Now, once you're in that state of relaxation, you feel comfortable and safe. And as you close your eyes, what happens is the part that a lot of people are scared about is like, what's going to happen if I close your eyes? When you close your eyes, you're shutting out this entire world that you see because you've already seen it, you've observed it, you've taken it in. And I want to say the evoking part is exactly this, that your entire this is your life has already been captured. It's already a part of your memory bank. So what I do is I help you close your eyes. So let's just do this together. Do you mind? I don't know if you are seeing me live at this very moment. If you are live, just say yes or one. If it is a repeat, just say uh, on, you are on a replay. But when you close your eyes, just give yourself permission to breathe. And exhale. One more time, nice deep breath. And hold for three, two, one, and exhale gently and slowly. And one more time, nice deep breath. And four, three, two, one, exhale. And with your eyes closed, what if you were to imagine a time and a place when you were young? That young version of you, perhaps the house you grew up in, your school, your friends, your family members, even kids within your neighborhood, your best friends. And just for a moment, linger there and think of a beautiful memory that brings a smile to your face. or any memory at this very moment that you would like to dissolve and heal so that it no longer affects you emotionally or physically. No, no matter what it is that came into surface up to your memory bank, to your consciousness at this very moment, to sit with it, be a witness to that thought. It is not happening for it is a part of the history. And what do we do with history? We observe it, we learn it, we learn. And as you evoke all the thoughts and ideas, the images, even sounds, perhaps even connected with a touch, if it feels good. Now, whatever it was 
that is part of the history for it is not your reality at this very moment and recognizing good bad right wrong no matter what it was it's already gone it has no power over you it is just a memory that helps you remember re Remember, that means to reconnect to a memory. And as you do, if it was a good memory, bank it in, be a part of it. And if it was not a memory, remember that if it was bad, it's already past. Even that is not happening at this very moment. And you are safe. You are safe right here, right now. You are safe. No matter where you are listening to this recording, this message. And embrace. Embrace the reality. Embrace this very moment that you are here listening. Embrace this moment that you have overcome and grown through it. Grown up. Grown above it you can now embrace all of you because you are here presently right what if you gave yourself permission to let go of all the things that you held on like all the adjectives you added all the nouns you added thinking that it does not affect you or it had power over you and recognizing that it becomes easier for you to come to the point of saying where do i want to go from now on what do i want to do from now on because that in itself needs courage it takes courage for us to give ourselves permission to recognize the history, to embrace the reality, and be real with yourself. If it is good, if it is bad, if it is hard, if it is painful, if it is something that you need to cry about, embrace it. Be real with you. Be real. Instead of putting all these masks and saying that you are stronger, that you can handle it, that you can do this. And I am going to be very vulnerable and probably for the first time be so raw with you. This last weekend, I had an incredible successful event. The room was filled with beautiful people. And everyone walked away because we had a healing circle. It was just empowering the, the looking into the left eye, which is the soul, and standing in a circle and affirming certain affirmations and verbiage to two people. Actually, yes, three people because it is a circle of three. That in itself is so revealing of our own soul connecting in heart, in mind. And as we touch the person across from us, it is truly connecting in mind, body, and spirit. So that is one of the exercises. And at the end, we had this beautiful drum circle. I came home after all that since we were there from seven o'clock by the time i got home it was about five o'clock and you know what that night i sat down like a zombie it was like the entire weight of the day of all the months just came crushing down upon me and i was depleted truly depleted and I just sat. I was vegging. And I remember the one thing I was telling everyone that doing nothing is doing something. Let me repeat it. Doing nothing is doing something. Because sometimes we are so overwhelmed. We are so bombarded. We, are, we take on so many things. We forget to give back to us and do nothing. Just sit. What are you doing? Nothing. And give yourself permission 
to do nothing because that in itself is something it's something very beneficial it is something very needy it is something that your body needs to take time off and give yourself the permission to take time off for you and just shut everything out literally shut everything out and away so that you can be by yourself it's like the times that we are in the shower and we are we close our eyes for the water that comes trickling down from the top of our head and we sometimes just put our hand either after our shampoo or everything and we just stand we just stand and sometimes when we feel the weight of the world on top of us just allow the water to cleanse and wash it down and let it go down the drain and if it is for you to cry go ahead and cry it is the most uplifting thing you can do for yourself of allowing the water to calm you down to wash away all the burdens all the pressure all the tension all that anxiety all the things that you suppress so the next day actually that entire night i could not sleep and this is very this is where i become vulnerable i could not sleep and because i was tossing and turning did my audience receive what i promised them did my audience feel elevated did my audience every single woman over there did they walk away with a nugget did they walk away with something that they feel that they felt they can use and then i was thinking to myself I didn't do this right I didn't do that right I missed this point I forgot to show this one slide on TV I was too long I I must have failed them so I was one of the biggest critiques to myself and instead of critiquing I went into the self mode of criticizing and this is one thing I teach I teach I teach everyone you can be a critic but stop judging and analyzing and criticizing yourself so that entire day Sunday I was I went from criticizing into compartmentalizing compartmentalizing what did I do right what did I do wrong what was wrong what was right this was beautiful this was good and then i started receiving the phone calls the messages the emails of how empowered some felt the hugs that i got and then it was like yes no yes no until the point i broke down and cried i was bawling i was bawling not only because of the things that I did not see and I was beating me, myself up but I was bawling because I recognized exactly what it is that I was doing and this is exactly how some people go through but they take it so much longer to recognize to come out of that funk and mine was probably not even 24 hours but i recognized and i started looking where can i become stronger where can i become better what can i do and then once i let go truly let go and embraced the messages embraced the emails one email was thank you thank you thank you for you opened my eyes and you opened my heart and you gave me permission i didn't realize i don't give myself permission to evolve and i am now ready to live my life so where in life do we stop living and we just exist we do so this part of evolving 
we get stuck. We get stuck in the evoking. Sometimes we don't even evoke it. We just suppress. We suppress and suppress and dump more on ours and thinking not good enough, not smart enough, not beautiful enough, not successful enough, not wealthy enough, not enough. And it's not about a man or a woman. It's not about race. It's not about color. It's not about anything. And yet I know that is it about upbringing? Could be. But from each of my speakers, when I am in that mode and I thought, okay, what was the message? Today, this morning, driving, I got that incredible message. Do you know what was the message? From Dr. Armin Agarpetian, we got the message that when you have something, that you do not like to do, and maybe it's one of your weaklings. You find a way to um, to delegate it and empower someone else to do. Wow, what a concept! You see, it, it was a, a nugget, and I want you to get that nugget when you have a weakness like hers was. Um, she does not like to do laundry, right? If with that, what she did was empower her daughters to do their own laundry. And by the time that it is a certain age or something, she delegated. And when the second child was 10, the sister helped the other uh, daughter, I mean, sister, to do the laundry. And now there's a whole line of empowered uh ladies the girls in the household that they do something that was delegated because of something one person did not like but she empowered she taught and she compartmentalized for someone else to feel good about doing something and helping out that's called service service in the house wow incredible nugget the second one was our uh, beautiful Christelle Goda, who is managing, literally side by side, working with her husband for LA Cancer Network. And LA Cancer Network is all about research for cancer. And her entire team, staff was there. That in itself shows the power of support system. And she's got support system at home. She also homeschools her, uh, has homeschooled three of her four sons. And she's got support system from family, from sisters, from staff members. So finding your circle of support system, either from family, staff, co-workers, friends, in order for you to be able to do the best in what you are good at. Ah. <sighs> magic right the third one was dr carolyn rowley psychologist beautiful in heart beautiful in spirit and what is it that i walked away with dr carolyn not only she is helping out in running the business for her husband that they have a beautiful business uh in burbank but also she is this biggest support system she has created this orphanage in Kenya that she goes and helps the children in Kenya the orphanage system with water electricity the children supporting them and they do everything for Machao Kenya the uh, the non uh, nonprofit that she has but also working with sickle cell and helping everyone with sickle cell and the message all the way to Washington. But her herself having that is like being grateful, being prayerful and mindful of who we are and trusting God and having this med sense of meditation and prayer with every single day that you open your eyes and knowing that you are here for a reason hmm. absolutely amazing 
Maybe at that very moment, I did not realize it. Maybe you, if you were there, you didn't realize it. We're going to post some of those talks and you will hear those. Even my speech that I taught, my speech was not delivered to the best of what I am good at. The message of what is hypnosis, what is this entire work that I do, the evoking, embracing, and evolving, the ones who needed it, the ones who wanted it, they got it. And I believe I come to this point, that when we are ready, we hear it. When we are ready for the change, we stand up. What is it that they say? When the student is ready, the master shows up. So. What may I help you with? As a clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant, as someone who is certified in domestic abuse and domestic violence, to help you recognize patterns, patterns of what was. So you recognize it, a light bulb goes on, and you go, aha. I am witness to what happened. It is not happening at this very moment. But if it is a pattern that you still are in the habit or it's a part of your behavior that it's no longer beneficial to you, let us embrace that part so that you can make that change, so you can enhance it, you can become better, you can become stronger, and you can give yourself the permission to make that change. That takes courage. It does. It takes resilience. It takes love. It takes you trusting you. So that we can evolve to what it is that we want to be, how we want to feel, what is it that we want to welcome into our life. And that is what I want to welcome into my life. How may I be of service to you? So because I go through it, I see it, I saw my own vulnerability, I saw what I did, I can recognize it so much faster and I want you to recognize how wonderful you are. That each and every one of us has a gift. Maybe you're an attorney or a surgeon, an engineer. Maybe you just work in a conglomerate corporate world or it doesn't matter. You can be a waiter or a waitress. We're all a part of service. We're all doing something to survive, to live, to live. And I want to help you thrive. I want you to help yourself thrive. And if I can be an instrument or a tool through the work that I do, I'm here for you. Other than that, it's all about the gifts that you had. And it's about enhancing your gifts recognizing your true value so the message of today is open your heart expand your mind and transform be open to transform because how i help you how i help myself is i went through the same thing by evoking everything as if watching, witnessing the entire thing of what happened, what was good, what was not, what was right. I embraced it. And now I can evolve and move on. Hello, Tony. Hi, Melanie. Oh, hi, Melanie. How are you, Melina? It's been a long time I haven't seen you. Hello, Arlette. How are you? I'm so glad you are here. So, hi, Michael. Thank you. Thank you for the beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, today I am in purple. 
I am in purple because I love the purple. It helps expand my third eye and connect and vibrate my thoughts. Um, each color resonates with a part of us, a part of the chakra. And recognizing that where I was feeling, I even put some lavender around me, even though I love the patchouli. I needed some lavender to calm, bring that calmness. I have my, uh, actually, I recognized that after I came to the office, wow, I was wearing lavender shirt and my lavender uh, necklace, my pendant. So in a way, it is to allow me to tap into my third eye, to my thought process and be more focused be more focused internally and as I speak. Today's message was embrace who you are. And as we go through everything in life, recognizing that where we are today is exactly where we are supposed to do and be. So take time off, do nothing, even if it is for two minutes at a time. And recognize that everything happens for you, not at you. So by embracing that, know that where you are, what you have done, is exactly where you want it to be. But what you do from this moment, how you empower yourself from this moment, is the gifts that you can now open and keep giving pass it forward this is lisa bubari i hope today's message was beneficial to you and if there was anything i can help you with either through managing stress anxiety boosting your confidence self-esteem or helping you through understanding what you need to evoke how to embrace yourself and how to evolve to the best version of you. Give me a call. Send me a message or an email. Until next week, I bid you goodbye. May God be with you. And may you be surrounded with support system and the universal light. God bless.